you know my name, sir? Don't need to know. You don't need to know my name? Not quite yet. I'll get oh, that really? information. Okay. You're about to find out who I am. This isn't a movie. Reese Witherspoon captured on camera in real life during her recent arrest. Ripe and ready to burn, wind-whipped flames continue to rage tonight in Southern California. She's acting the part, and she's lying. She's making it all up. We are on verdict watch. The defense delivers all the stops in the last day of closing arguments in the Jody Arias trial. Plus, the dirtiest offenders in the produce aisle, now on Good Evening Arizona. Well, verdict watch now in the Jody Arias Marathon murder trial. Good evening, Arizona. I'm Stella Inger in for Patty tonight. Closing arguments have wrapped up in the Jody Arias murder trial. It is now in the hands of the jurors. Mike Watkins has followed the trial since the beginning. He joins us with today's developments. Mike, we have been waiting for this for months. We certainly have, Stella. It has been 57 days in court, stretching over more than four months, and now final day of testimony. Coming up at 5 o'clock, we'll throw it back to you. All right, Mike, thank you. Powerful closing arguments from both sides. In the meantime, though, tonight at 6, we have a special edition of Good Evening Arizona, a full half hour of this murder trial. We're going to take a close look at the circus inside and outside the courtroom as well. Again, that begins tonight at 6 o'clock. Phoenix police blame two parents for the death of their two-year-old son. Darnell Alvarez and Davina Black face murder and child abuse charges. Alvarez is accused of using a belt to beat the child, but investigators suspect that wasn't the only weapon. They cite severe bruising, a lacerated liver, as well as internal bleeding. Police say the boy's mother saw the incident but did not help him. We relied heavily on uh, doctors from the medical examiner's office who conducted the autopsy. Uh, and so obviously based upon their recommendations and what they saw from a medical standpoint, uh, we proceeded forward with this investigation. And according to court paperwork, Alvarez admitted his involvement. If convicted, he could face the death penalty. Fire crews were able to prevent a brush fire from spreading in the Southwest Valley. This is what it looked like near 107th Avenue and Southern this morning. A boat was destroyed and the flames burned up a big backyard there, but no buildings were damaged. Now that fire, nothing compared to the fires burning to the west of us. Look at this. Just check out this picture captured last night. This is in Ventura County, California. Tonight, thousands of homes are in danger, forcing some to get out. The fire has already burned 10,000 acres and some 2,000 homes are threatened by this fire because of the high winds and those hot temperatures there. So far, the fire has damaged at least 15 homes and caused the evacuation of California State University Channel Islands. Tonight, it is only 10% contained. The high winds are making it difficult for firefighters to get it under control. And Royal, I lived in California. You know, mm. those Santa Ana winds, when they go, yeah, they, they go. just go. You, you see that. So yeah. are the firefighters going to get a break? They are. Later tonight, the red flag warnings are going to drop off. Temperatures are also going to drop That's off, which good. is good news, yeah. too. So through the weekend, things will improve. But tonight, it's going to stay plenty windy. We've got a bunch of dust around here, too, not from the fires, but from a bunch in the valley today. We got to 92 degrees, but it's going to be much warmer for the weekend and then big changes. More on that in just a couple of minutes. There's a lady crying out, help me, help me. So I had my phone with me and I called 911 and uh, she had bees in her hair. Well, you know, it's common this time of the year to hear the sound of bees buzzing, but they can also go on the attack just like they did yesterday. So what do you do if you run into a swarm of angry bees? Well, Steve Bodnay talked with the experts and he joins us. Steve, are there still some bees buzzing around there? Yeah, Stella, this is a popular short. You do get attacked, cover your face and run. And Stella, get out of their territory as soon as you can. I sure will. Thank you very much for that, Steve. Speaking of bees, a new study finds a number of reasons for the die off of the honeybee. The USDA and the EPA released a comprehensive report on it. The research says pesticides, parasites, poor nutrition and disease are all to blame in what's now called colony collapse disorder. It is a billion dollar business An estimated one third of all food and beverages come from pollination, mainly by honeybees. 
A construction closure on a popular Valley Freeway to tell you about tonight. The southbound lanes of the State Route 51 will be closed between Greenway and T Cactus. Closure begins tonight at 11 o'clock and won't reopen until 7 tomorrow morning. Crews will be installing a ramp meter there. Well, high schoolers from across Arizona tested their skills under the hood today. They are preparing for kicking the Ford AAA Auto Skills Competition. Well, the winner goes on to the national competition in Michigan next month. Still to come, this is video you just have to see. Reese Witherspoon getting arrested. The dash cam video. See for yourself what really happened. And get ready, we are off to the races. The historic ride being made at tomorrow's Kentucky Derby. He said, no, you can't ask me any questions. And I said, sir, I have a question to ask you. And, he, and I said, I also need to use the restroom because I'm pregnant. Oh man, new police dashboard video is out tonight showing Reese Witherspoon's recent arrest. And even so, the actress is trying to move past the incident. Witherspoon pleaded no contest and has paid a fine for allegedly interfering with the arrest of her husband on a drunk driving charge and offered the world a giant mea culpa. Natalie Brand has more. Holly Natalie Brand for 3TV. Well, now they know her name. Jim Toth pleaded guilty to DUI. He's been placed on a 12-month probation. Lindsay Lohan has checked into rehab for reals this time. Yesterday, we told you she checked into a California facility, but come to find out minutes later, she actually checked out. She was supposed to start a 90-day rehab stint yesterday to avoid jail. Well, today, she checked into the Betty Ford Center in Rancho Mirage. <laughs> That is Iron Man 3 star Robert Downey Jr. ringing in the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange earlier this week. It raked in $15.6 million in its midnight screenings overnight. The action flick is expected to bring in $175 million this weekend. Rosie Napatnik has already made history by becoming the first female jockey to win the Kentucky Oaks, the Derby for Phillies. Well, now Rosie's hoping to win tomorrow's Kentucky Derby, America's most famous horse race. They always say, no, you guys are the best riders in the world. And that's like, you know, a big moment where you're like, yeah, you know, it's great to be here. It wasn't easy for Rosie Napatnik to reach horse racing's elite level. The New Jersey native began racing when she was only seven years old and has proven her resilience along the way in her latest run for the Roses. Both my parents are into horses. My, my father's a farrier. My mom uh, trains event horses. I saw the, this video called The Jewels of the Triple Crown on VHS. I didn't have television, so I would just watch this video over and over again. And I just was, um, you know, just inspired by it and, I, and that's when I decided I wanted to win the Triple Crown. Such lofty goals were formed at a young age by the fiery redhead. Rosie's racing style can be described as aggressive and she's not easily intimidated by her male counterparts. To be honest with you, uh, the female aspect to me has, has, I think, worked to my advantage in a lot of respects, um, just with publicity and, you know, uh, being recognized for things that I've accomplished. Um, that may not have been uh, such a big deal if it was just another male jockey. If you're winning races, it's really uh, irrelevant what gender you are. Go Rosie, girl power. Well, the big over-the-top hats, mint juleps, and of course the ponies, but you don't have to travel too far to join tomorrow's Kentucky Derby fun because Yetta Gibson has more on the biggest party right here in town. Hello there. Yeah, you don't have to travel. It's on our website, azfamily.com. Back to you. Thank you, Yetta. Well, you got your hat ready? Yeah, I, yes, I do. But don't you just love those events because you see all those nice I'd hats? Like to go, the I'd girls like to go do. Once. I'd like to go once. Well, it's, it's tomorrow. Yes. The weekend is I'm, here. I'm not going to get there. But, but golf. golf. Golf tomorrow morning. Are you yeah. golfing? I am not. No, no one invited me. Oh. How'd that happen? I'm sure there are a lot of people who would invite you, Royal. Well, anyway, the golf forecast is looking <laughs> pretty good tomorrow morning. We're going to see your seven day forecast in just a couple of minutes. Royal, thank you. Well, ahead tonight, the new safety concerns surrounding a common ingredient in soap we all use to wash our hands. Plus, the fruits and veggies you might want to avoid in the produce aisle, especially after you hear this year's dirtiest offenders.
Well, the new list of dirty offenders in the produce aisle out tonight. Much more in tonight's health headlines. The Environmental Working Groups just released its 2013 Dirty Dozen list, and apples top it, followed by celery, cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, grapes, hot peppers, nectarines, peaches, potatoes, spinach, strawberries, and sweet bell peppers. However, there are plenty of produce options that are relatively free of harmful pesticides. Here is the Clean 15. Asparagus, avocado, cabbage, cantaloupe, sweet corn, eggplant, grapefruit, kiwi, mangoes, mushrooms, onions, papayas, pineapples, frozen sweet peas, and sweet potatoes. The FDA plans to look at the safety of a common active ingredient in antibacterial products. It's called triclosan. The FDA says the chemical is not currently known to be hazardous to human health. The agency says animal studies, though, have shown the ingredient changes hormone regulation. It also says other studies have raised the possibility that it contributes to making bacteria resistant to antibiotics. From carousels to coasters, it's all about summer fun. But remember, you can also get her on these rides. From 1990 to 2010, more than 90,000 youngsters under the age of 18 were treated for these types of injuries. And more than 70% happened during the May to September time period. Luckily, only a very small percentage were serious. Something to keep in mind, all rides can be dangerous. Our obsession with high-tech devices could be causing some of your aches and pains, like nagging neck pain. I thought the worst, because the pain was that severe. The culprit? All those hours looking down at the e-reader. You're dubbing it smartphone finger. Um, some other problems are mouse tendinitis um, or sometimes just a tablet neck. So the remedy, sitting up straight. Doctors say frequent breaks can also help prevent injury. Well, we will be back with more of today's top stories on Good Evening Arizona. Fields Mosley has a look at what's coming up next, Step 5. Well, Stella, as you know, we are officially on verdict watch now at the Jody Arias murder trial tonight.